Hey there, and welcome back again to Yes, a Stripper Podcast. On this podcast, we'll discuss how classifying each other as people and workers is dangerous to society and marginalized groups of people. We'll also talk about the climate in and outside of the strip clubs and all of the amazing things that strippers do. And of course, we'll talk about all of the things in between. I'm your queen, A.M. Davies, and this is Yes, a Stripper Podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Yes, a Stripper podcast. I'm your queen, AMD, and it's another day of quarantine. Very exciting stuff. I think my favorite thing about quarantine and doing this podcast is I get to interview people from all different areas of the world because we can't be in the studio, so why not, right? Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about what's been going on in my world lately. Um, I'm in, I have been in the process of making a very hard decision lately, um, and it required me to do a lot of research, a lot of talking to people, and a lot of reaching out to new groups of people that I never had before. And I just wanted to talk about what that process is like, I feel like in, mo in almost all of our lives, there's going to come a day when you have to make a very big life altering decision. And the experience that I've had recently, I just like want to make sure that everyone like that you really take the time to do all of your research and create a pros and cons list. Like I'll give you an example. My brother and sister, um, I'm sorry, my sister and my brother-in-law are, uh, you know, have been talking about having a baby for a really long time for like about three years and they have a pros and cons list and they talk to their friends about the pros and cons and they're really like analyzing the situation and doing their research on what, how their lives would change if they had a baby. And I just really love that logical approach to it um, uh, because it is a life altering thing. And so this is just more of like a PSA from me to you basically saying like when it comes time for like for you to make a huge decision, especially one that's based on like your overall survival in life, just like really, really take the time to listen to yourself and meditate, listen to the universe and like trust yourself and do the research and talk to people and don't take very large decisions lightly. Um, and you know, that's, pretty much it. And, you know, throughout this conversation on this podcast, you'll kind of get an idea of what that decision, um, that's something that I've been thinking about is and what that's like for me. And um, our guest here on the show today uh, is a dear friend of mine, Izzy. And she's someone who has definitely had to make um, some pretty big decisions in her life uh, in, in the recent past. So hi, Izzy, can you say hello to everyone? Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Can you hear me all right? Yeah, you sound good. good. Yay. Yeah, totally. Thank you so much. So Izzy, it's so funny because I opened up with saying like, I get to talk to all these people all over the world when you only live 10 minutes from me right now. I know. So yeah. Close. Yeah. Yeah. I thought Obviously about it was that. special. We got to hang out yesterday and see yeah. each other. Yeah. That was such a treat. I think we spent like a solid two hours with each other yesterday and it was just an absolute so nice. treat. Yeah, it was so nice. Because before that, the last time we hung out was like three months ago, right? Where we were just like hopping all around Franklin Village. So fun. I, I got the photos developed. They're super dark, but I, I think I haven't sent them to you yet. There's some, we like set them up and like took some time. That photos. was outside was so of that like party. That <laughs> So we're with Izzy's friend, Alexa, and Alexa, we go to this mansion party, and we're like, um, duh, we want to go to a mansion party, and we get all the way up to Mount Olympus in front of a house that, like, there's nobody there. Not a soul. Not a soul there, and we're just standing outside this fucking stranger's mansion in Mount Olympus. Yeah. I think the conclusion we came to is, like, the guy was, like, fucking with her, just trying to get her to come over or something. Yeah, I, I don't even, I think it was just like, we didn't even know him just like on a whim, like, let's see. But we ended up having a great night. Yeah, we did have a really great night. We ended with <laughs> karaoke. Um, yeah, which I'm not a huge fan of karaoke, but it was fun watching my friends embarrass themselves. Yeah. Yeah. 
So um, what, <laughs> what is going on in your world uh, as far as like how you're surviving quarantine, like, and, and being, uh, you know, a sex worker slash stripper? What, what's that like for you right now? I mean, it's, it's tough because, um, and I'm sure a lot of us in this industry can relate, like, I'm a super social person. I, I'm an extrovert for the most part. I love people. I love interactions. So it's been hard to not have that, like, human connection in a lot of ways, you know? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I don't know. I've, I've, it's definitely, like, a roller coaster day by day, up and down. Yeah. Um, I miss, I, uh, dancing is what I love to do, you know? Totally. And it's hard to not have a pull to just like, you know, it's hard to self-motivate when you're stuck in the, the same house all day. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. Um, yeah. But it's been nice uh, to be a part of these virtual strip clubs. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm what are you, that. when you're on the virtual strip club, are you, cause last <laughs> time I did one and I was just rolled around on the floor in my bed. Yeah. Um, that's cute. And I, we have poles here. I could have used them, but I'm just like, for, you know, we'll get into it later, but I'm like, I'm not going to be on my feet tonight. So like, what, yeah. what do you do then? Is it like a living room or a bedroom? Um, there's like a second kind of level in our bedroom. So oh. we just like m move some furniture and I just rock out mainly on the floor. Um, <clears throat> for those of you, probably a lot of you don't, who don't know me, I'm an amputee uh, below the knee. Here's my little leg, and it's been causing me some pain yeah. lately, so um, a lot of floor work for me, which I like to shake my ass and be sexy on the floor, so yeah, it's yeah, fun, you know? Yeah. yeah, so you identify as a stripper, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, and you, since your amputation, you still worked as a stripper, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when, how long ago was it that you had your amputation? So it was December 8th, 2016. Okay. So all, about four years. Yeah. And, a half. Um, and it's definitely been a journey to get back up. I'm now back down, but that's kind of how it goes. Um, but I did have a privilege to dance. Um, you know, when I moved to LA at Sam's and at Cheetah's, um, throughout different stages, that there were stages of me when I could walk and I had my prosthetic and I was able to dance. And then even um, there was times at Cheetah's when I was on crutches, bandaged leg, you know, not able to use a prosthetic um, and they it, still let me dance. So you, yeah, wow. Okay, I did not know this. So you were working at Cheetah's with your amputation on crutches. Yeah. I was just one leg, like on crutches, no prosthetic. Just, and I just crawl, I would crawl onto stage and then like, they had like the two poles at each end, you know? Yeah. So I would, like do a little pole work, then just like crawl across the stage to the next end and like do pole work and then do like floor stuff the whole time again, you know? So on your standing leg, <laughs> are you wearing your stripper heel while on crutches? Yeah. Oh yeah, my so I would god! Like my crutches to be like super tall. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, um, yeah. Okay, so did you find that you were making good money then? Because did people pay you more because of that? Do you think, or was that weird for them? Like, how did people react? Um, <laughs> I have to say, like, I always felt so welcomed at Cheetahs. Yeah. Like. Sam's was a different story for me. Um, I, even with my, I only danced there only when I could walk and had my prosthetic on, but like, it was just not really, I don't know, not really the vibe, but she does everyone, like the, the, everyone that worked there and everyone that came in was super, um, you know, just made me feel comfortable about it. And I would say maybe, not like, I don't think people, I was making money basically like sympathy, you know? I think it was more so like people like sick, like, oh my God, like you're totally. like, still out here doing this, you know? Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of what I would imagine their 
their reaction would be is like, wow, like you're like, kudos to you. You're, you're still here and on crutches and you're still killing it, you know? So like, I definitely would, would give you all my money also. Cause I totally love you. So, <laughs> you know, but, um, but yeah. Um, yeah. I just think that's so tight. I've, I don't think I've ever seen a stripper on crutches at work before. Yeah. ever it was like yeah yeah it was fun I have a, a a friend took a photo of me it's on my Instagram but I don't you can't really tell that I'm I think you can kind of see my crutches in the back and I'm like counting money it's just like my torso yeah and if you look closely you can see like I'm not wearing my leg and stuff yeah it was that was a fun time so how long was it after your amputation that you um got back to stripping It was, it was a while because I had so many complications, um, <clears throat> as many of us amputees do. Mm -hmm. I, um, I couldn't even walk for like a year and a half after my amputation. Like I was still on crutches for a long time. So mm -hmm. I don't think it was until right. It was right when I moved to California, um, which was in uh uh March of 2018 I think okay. so right when I moved here is when I started dancing again <clears throat> and I could walk then okay so that was like you know two about two years later yeah and so okay so full transparency you guys um this by the time this podcast comes out this will probably already have have happened but I made the decision today after talking to my last doctor um, oh, wow. uh, yeah, that I'm getting a below the knee amputation within the next 30 days. Um, and, uh, I say all that to say it's really, really important to me. And Izzy knows this to be able to wear the shoes that I want to wear specifically stripper heels. And so I'm bringing that up because Izzy and I went to a prosthetics doctor together yesterday um, it's Izzy's prosthetics doctor to talk about options. And one of my favorite things about you, Izzy, um, your physical appearance is that you have this beautiful prosthetic stripper shoe foot shoe thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Yeah. So can, and it's, it's something that I aspire to have and be like you when I grow up. <laughs> so can you tell our audience like what that shoe looks like and why it's very special and how it's specially designed and what it was like for you to like um for, to work with you know your prosthetics doctor to create this thing for you um yeah it's <clears throat> I mean I think it's interesting but I'm you know I'm an amputee but it, I try to think back like before I had one leg, before I like, I have learned so much. There's so much that I didn't know about prosthetics. Yeah. And, you know, I like, even when I got my leg amputated, I wasn't for sure that, sure that I was going to be able to wear a shoe like this, you know? Um, so that's a hard thing for us amputees is uh, without, without feet. And, and I know that you have trouble wearing shoes now too, is yeah. we don't have an, endless choice like we used to you know so right. we're down to like lots of times sneakers or like comfortable lightweight stuff you know when it's just like I want boots I want like cowboy yeah. boots I want yeah. a heel I want something strappy like everything like that um but I've gotten what I think is pretty close and I you saw a lot of examples yesterday of that um yeah so working with my process, my, my CPOs, um, What's it was a actually, CPO? my, that's a, that's a prosthetist, a person that makes the legs. Okay. You call CPO them CPO usually. for sure. Okay. It's like a doctor is like, you know, and then there's like MD and then like, da, 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 da. Oh, okay. So I, I like, didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. CPO. Yeah, so okay. CPO. Nice. Um, so the, so I had told her, you know, I'm a, my, I'm a dancer da, 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 and it's really hard with insurance to get all these components that you need and you need so many components for a prosthetic yeah. yeah um but she was able my first um cpo was able to write 
my leg as, you know, I'm a dancer, I need it for work. I also, you know, I tour and I do all this stuff. So amazingly, she wrote it off and I had used the pleaser model um, because I, you know, grew up with them. That's my, I've never not worn pleasers to dance, in, uh, you know. Yeah, and for our audience who, if you're a uh, civvy and you don't know what pleasers are, <laughs> they're the number one uh, stripper shoe brand. They pretty much have a monopoly um, on stripper shoes. The, uh, about 95% of the time when you see a stripper wearing shoes, they're most likely pleaser brand. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So comfortable. <laughs> yeah. I love. You got to be in those shits all day. All um, day. Yeah. So, and the cool thing about them too is even though the platform height changes, the arch height stays the same. Yeah, totally. So the arch height is like four inches. So I told her, we got all this information and she was able to have this foot manufactured um, that it's, how do you say it? It's like static. It's like stuck uh -huh. at the four inch arch, you know, it's like, so it's that. like a permanent Barbie foot basically. Yeah. Permanent yeah. Barbie yeah. foot like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but at least, you know, I have the options now of wearing any shoe that is, that fits the same height, which is pleasers or, I mean, you know, I'm trying to find other stuff right now, but, um, so that was really fun. And, and, um, I mean, I just, I remember the look on everyone in the office face when I put it on and put on the six inch heels and like started walking everyone was just like like they had never seen anything like it you know yes I love um, it so good um uh, but you know you you're you're gonna have a lot more options now and I'm super excited for you yeah thank you and one of the things that you know I just like to mention about your prosthetics doctor and it was a, like a really driving force in in my decision making is that like he asked me and I know that he's done the same with you is like, what is your purpose? Mm -hmm. What, what is it that you want your life to be? And you have, you know, you have to make a choice around the functionality that you aim to have in your lifestyle. And so that was most likely, uh, I'm assuming a conversation that you all had. It was like, I need this shoe because I need this lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. And shout out Vartan. He is amazing. And it's always from the minute, the minute I saw him, I was unable to walk again. My leg I started having problems again. And he, you know, it's that bond and that, you know, having that connection and being that like open with your person that's making something that's so special and intimate for you, you know, is really important. Someone they, you know, you want to feel like you're being cared for in a, in a certain way. So that's like super important. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That. It just made me think about, cause I was talking, I used in, in my example in the beginning of like how my, my sister and brother-in-law are, are like how they're dealing, deal handling things around having a baby. And it, it reminds me that like, similarly, like you want to have a connection to your doctor. You want to have like these conversations, mm -hmm. these intimate details. And like, you know, it's just at the end of the day, it's like huge decisions about your body. And, um, I guess like for me before all of this, I never even considered like having to make that kind of huge decision and like being confronted with that, just like really put things into perspective. Also like I've been going like this, like, oh, what did you think? That you're just going to skate through life perfect your whole yeah. life? No yeah. health issues ever? No yeah. health issues ever? I'm just over here fucking cruising, man. <laughs> 20 years? Like, yeah, fucking right, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's a part of it. It's a part of this journey. Totally. And something I find really interesting that you said is, like, you know, they had never seen an amputee, like, put on an eight-inch heel, but my, my friend was just talking to me about a video she saw of an amputee surfer, and uh -huh. we see them all the time, like, the surfers, the hikers, mm -hmm. the, um, snowboarders, snowboarders like, here, yeah. yeah, but, like, then you don't ever consider, like, we have a very, very active lifestyle, so what happens when we get amputated? Yeah, it's, I mean, the thing is, is like, we're now setting those examples. Yeah. 
we are doing that now we, just because we didn't have that really before or whatever like now now it's our turn I think yeah yeah I think so too and I've seen other pole dancers that are amputees but they're not definitely so they're not sure yeah. Well. yeah 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 so the shoes yeah. aren't as important but like you know I can't live a life without wearing the heels I want. Yeah. And, and I should, yeah. Yeah. And you feel the same. Yeah. 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 And, and that's, I mean, people like say to me a lot, like, I don't know, stuff like, oh, like, I can't believe like you're doing, you're dancing again or like how incredible, like you went back to this. And I, I'm genuinely very lucky that. <clears throat> I, I'm I'm well enough to be able to do it so yeah. you know but also like I could not I just like think when they say that kind of stuff to me like like I couldn't not live my life and be yeah. happy and be a dancer and like do that you know yo it just kind of dawned on me something I wonder if it's because the it's just such like common general thinking that we want to find an out from this job you know whereas like if, let's say we were snowboarders it would be like well of course they're going back to snowboarding but right. as strippers we're like well of course I'm going back to stripping and they're like oh whoa yeah Are you sure? <laughs> like not understanding <laughs> that we love what we do just as much as someone who snowboards right but, but I mean uh, that's the, the issue like that I've run into my whole life even when I wanted to start dancing in the first place I had a therapist and I liked her for the most part but when I told her you know I'm like thinking about becoming a stripper da, 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 she it was just like she turned and it was just like oh it's horrible you're gonna get raped like you're gonna like da 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 da, da and all this stuff and I was like whoa and then I still did it because also I'm like fuck you and then I did, I'm like I'm gonna do it harder now <laughs> you gotta strip even harder now yeah. <laughs> and so I went and did it and it was like for the first time I was working with like a group of like women of all shapes sizes colors like together like we owned this shit it was a woman runs like a female owned strip club like it was like for the first time like I had never in my years of modeling or serving or like a uh, hostessing, I had never had that kind of a female community, you know, and like, of course there's ups and downs like there is with everything, but for the most part, I've had a, a pleasant experience with what I do. Yeah. And you were dancing up North, right? Can you, can you share more specifically? Cause that's really a unique situation that it was all female run and well, yeah, it was, when it first started out, it was um, owned by a, a woman who used to be a dancer um, in the in the Seattle area, and then she was smart with her money and bought this property outright, so she had, um, it was like one building, but in um, Washington, you, can have you can't have alcohol and nudity, so they don't even do like how they do it out here. They just do no booze and full nudity on one side. And then the, the cool thing about this building though was the other side was a bar and um, <clears throat> food. So you could like go drink and then you just have to like go outside and go to the club. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was from when I was like 18 till I was like 20. Um, and it's full nudity there. It's definitely completely different scene than here. So it's full nudity, which I don't know. I think because it's, you know, it's not like your Portland or your LA where like there's, we're drinking, we're, it's a party, like girls are coming in, guys are coming in, that kind of thing. It's like more, um, it seems to be a little bit, uh oh, I'm just going to die. Hopefully it stays. Seems to be a little bit more people coming into solicit sex a lot of times. Okay. Like that where you were at um, just everywhere in, Every everywhere in Washington okay everywhere yeah it Got doesn't it. matter if you're in Tacoma or Everett or like whatever okay um <clears throat> which you know the only thing that's concerning in that case really is just dancer safety and whatnot um but uh so it's it's very different and and I don't know I don't know 
if it's because of also Seattle super depressing and but there's I feel like you know we were just ended up starting to deal with like a lot of drug problems with girls and yeah and it's hard because it's a safe place for people to come to you know um <clears throat> I actually started managing the place for a little while and so I have like different you know views inside the everything um yeah but I was super lucky when I started out to be with like a really fun group of women and we were really close um and all worked together and stuff like that yeah yeah but I I yeah you told me a little bit some stories about how it got pretty it can get pretty intense up there with um the drug use and and the sex work and do you think that has something to do with like the area itself or the state itself and like the overall vibe there well yeah that's what I was thinking like Seattle's just so depressing yeah like <laughs> you know I mean it's like rainy and dark and most of the time and stuff so I mean it's the highest suicide capital it's yeah super common for people to have drug and alcohol right. problems there you know did you did you hear of things like similarly happening in other clubs in the area or in the state? Mm -hmm. or, yeah, yeah, because we have so many. I mean, we we would have like you know four hundred dancers contracted, like at this one place. Yeah, like a like a ton of girls. I mean, we wouldn't have four hundred in the building at one time, but we, we could have like a hundred and thirty or something like That's that. A lot. Like, yeah, like a lot, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then so you hear, and you know, it was like really <clears throat> in close competition there with the other clubs. And when I was managing, I really found out a lot more about that. Um, and so, you know, you, and, and as a dancer, I would go to different clubs sometimes and mm -hmm. you would see the same thing. And mm -hmm. there was not at, not at the club I worked at, obviously, but um, like, really like abuse of power when you think of the dirty uh owner that like makes you suck his dick like they, that's happening that was happening like that kind of thing so that that was a constant scare for me I mean we constantly had like pimps out in the parking lot and like all we were always having to like <clears throat> be very we, like yeah we always have to be very aware of everything yeah I'm um, okay so I'm really glad that this came up because actually this ties into another topic that I wanted to talk to you about but like so have, I don't know if you've seen the movie Bombshell or not yet oh um with it, Charlize Theron yeah I yeah think I saw that one that. yet yeah well you know they were also in a similar situation where they were being exploited and there was an abuse of power and they were being you know, like intimidated and forced into like sucking the boss's dick also, you know, mm. and the reason why I'm bringing that up is because it is kind of like a running stigma and like generalization put on us as sex workers and strippers, especially, um, or actually sex workers in general, um, that, you know, that, yeah, there's like that slimy boss that's like, well, suck my dick. Like that's even like something that the boss on, um, showgirls does at one point. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. then, you know, what's really funny about that character is towards the end, they turn him into like this really like likable character at the end. Okay. Yeah. Like totally like <laughs> trying to gloss over the fact that he was like, like definitely, yeah, definitely like making his dancers suck his dick. And then at the end, it's like, uh, oh, isn't he so nice? And we love him now. You know, it's like, okay. Um, but I, I say all that to say that, um, you know, we are as women and workers oftentimes treated similarly, um, either in an office or like a huge media corporation setting or in like a strip club in Washington state you right. know and um and then yeah we were talking the other day yesterday about how you had been treated um one day as um a street sex worker and treated very poorly a, a, a definite way not to treat a street sex worker but can you tell the story because and then I'll like kind of tie in later the whole point of this and my, actually i'll say now the point i'm trying to make is that when you treat sex workers like shit it all trickles down into everyday women right yes 
Yeah. So and, tell the story of what happened to you. Okay. So <clears throat> when I first moved to Los Angeles, I lived in um, like a art kind of uh, warehouse on Skid Row. And if you don't know about Skid Row, it's a very uh, heavily populated, I think like almost the most in the United States. Actually, Seattle's pretty bad too. Um, <clears throat> but of homeless people and a lot of them, a lot of the times that comes with mental illness, drug addiction, all of that. Um, so I lived right on 7th and Town, which is right in the middle of it. And uh, one night I had just, I, I was on using my prosthetic, so I was able to walk and I had just gone to McDonald's and got like a big Sprite and like some fries or something. And I <clears throat> parked my car and as I get out of the car, this car comes up and honks at me. And I know the drill, like, I get, like you're always getting honked at when you're down there, it's like pretty normal. So I just like, I always just like, don't even like look at them, don't make eye contact, don't make anything seem like, and this is in my head, like, like I want anything to do with them, you know? It's like yeah. completely, they could not even be on this planet Earth right now. I don't even right. know, you know? Yeah. So I start like walking, go to hit like the cross the street button, pulls up close to me, honks again. And it's like, ugh. I was like, you know those days you're just really not in the fucking mood? Yeah. yeah. That was the day. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I was just like, ugh. So I like, like just jaywalked and ran across the street. And because I had just hit the cross the street button, the light changed. So the guy that was honking at me pulls up alongside of me, honks again. To this point, I am just out of my mind. So like like are you insane I, you've honked at me so many times I literally haven't even looked you in your direction like yeah. I was just not feeling it so right. he pulls up alongside me rolls the window down and is like hey sexy and I had like a massive spray didn't even take one sip out of it and just chucked it <laughs> and it just went whoosh, poof and just landed all over his like dashboard he had like some electronics like everything like him everything was soaked it was like <laughs> I was like the most amazing shot I've ever thrown <laughs> I can't yeah. believe it <laughs> and so I like walking away like da, 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 da. and he he like par parks the car and gets out and is, is like raging and he's like what the fuck bitch I'm undercover LAPD and I was just like the fuck you are I was yeah. like, what the hell are you doing honking at me? And he's like, it's my job. And I was like, the fuck it's your job? Following women around? That's your fucking job? I was like, I yeah. was like, oh, I was so pissed. And he's like, you need to come and fucking clean this up. And I was like, I was like, you're you think I'm gonna get into your car? No, sir. No, you psycho. And so I was just like, uh-uh, and started like walking fast and like getting my keys out. And then he got super mad to the point where he was screaming, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. I'm going to beat the fucking shit out of you running after me. And I'm like running and like unlocking my door. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I was so, I was like yeah. literally, ter I mean, I've never been so scared. Yeah. Never been so scared. Um, yeah. Because he was like a big fucking dude. And I couldn't tell, like, he did have, like, a, I couldn't tell if he had a badge or, like, what was going on. Like, there was definitely something going on. I don't know if he was, like, impersonating an officer or if he really was undercover or, like, yeah. what. But, like, it was so insane. I called, I tried to call 911 um, for, like, the next three hours. They never answered. Right. It was, like, so, so, so out of control. <sighs> I'm so sorry that happened to you. Um as a woman, I do know what it's like to also be mistaken for a worker when I'm not working. Um, I'm just outside being a person. Um, and sometimes it's disrespectful and sometimes it's curiosity um, on their part because they're just trying to figure out. Um, and but when it's disrespectful and scary like that it's, yeah he obviously thought you were working yeah 
Um, and you weren't. And so that's why I was saying, first of all, even if you were working, that is the absolute terrible. It's not terrible. a good way to go about it. It's terrible. <laughs> and my point in you sh- and like sharing this story is that because it's okay to treat sex workers horribly, a lot of men can't discern or distinguish what everyone's boundaries are, and therefore their poor behavior gets dumped out onto any woman. Mm-hmm. And because they're because society has this message of like, oh dead hooker in the trunk of your car or I don't want to ever want my child I failed at life if my child is a stripper like sex workers are garbage basically but sex workers are majority women and so then they're just mistake because it's okay for them to treat sex workers poorly then they mistake a woman who's not a sex worker and then they also feel the ramifications of that Mm -hmm. and how do we fix that yeah I mean I mean, even, even, yeah, like you're saying, even if I was a woman down on Skid Row working, like, it's not how you treat them. No, like, right. there's still people with, with feelings and, right, you know, <clears throat> things going on. But again, like, women are such objects all the time. Exactly. Yes. So, like, yeah. I mean, sure, you can talk to, you can be like, do whatever, you know, like, to something to an object and you could throw a pillow over there like right right women can be pretty like disposable I think in, right and but, but I had this epiphany the other day I think that women <clears throat> are disposable because it starts with like this classification issue that we have as a society and it just trickles into every walk of life at that point if you can use a marginalized group of people and fuck with them and shit on them then that there's so much gray area and it just starts to expand through throughout humanity right it's like a larger human issue that i see Mm -hmm. personally no 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah um Do you have any suggestions? Because I have ideas of how I think it could improve. Do you have any ideas? Please, no, you you go first. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it starts with educating children um, uh-huh. sooner about not just how to have sex, like the actual anatomy of it, but um, like consent and how to communicate around sex. Um, mm-hmm. Like I had, I was texting with this dude that I met on Hinge for a day and he's like, I just had to have the like, birds and the bees talk with my daughter. And it was like the emoji with the monkey covering his eyes. And I'm like, yeah. why, why does it have why? to be like that? Because, well, I feel like when dads have it too, it's always like, um, it's always like, a, uh, I, I don't want, you know, my little girl, like, <laughs> you know, like all like that, like no man come near me, I'll get my gun, you know, something. Yeah. When <clears throat> I mean, and that like we we were also talking about this yesterday with like how we don't really learn consent in school. Like it's like, yeah, we learn anatomy, but I mean I didn't grow up with that and <clears throat> you know, it, yeah. I'm sure it would have really helped. <laughs> to yeah. Be, like, to really be um, explained, you know, how to have sex and be intimate in a healthy way. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that introducing people who really need the help to like these types of conversations will also help improve. I mean, I just had um, a friend of mine that, you know, we're Instagram friends and I've never met him in person. And, Mm -hmm. um, he's a very, very respectful person. I keep in contact with a few respectful cis men that I meet on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he was like, I listened to all of your podcasts and I've realized some pretty terrible things that I've done and said in regards to women in the past. Mm-hmm. And so he's like hearing these conversations and he's like, oh, I'm guilty of that. And he's like yeah. finding ways now to like, it's like opening his eyes, you know? Oh, I mean, that's amazing. That's what you would hope for, right? Like, yeah. Even just one person or whatever, anyone to take a second and self-reflect. <clears throat> I mean, 
we've all made mistakes and, and we can always learn. So that's good that, yeah. <clears throat> that he's taking the time to actually do that himself, you know? Yeah. And I think yeah. that we all make mistakes and like do these horrible things because we're like trained from childhood. Conditioned. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Or not trained. Right. It's just, and I just don't understand this lack of conversation around sex. The one and only reason we exist here. Yeah. Seriously. is through sex, but we can't talk about it. We can't enjoy it. We can't pay for it and we can't get paid for it without just a rain of hellfire coming down on us. Day oh my God. Day. If you want to see, see something interesting, you should follow, um, if you have Facebook, uh, Christians Against Science. What? Okay. It is so funny. wild. But it sounds like it'll be funny. It's, I mean, I think people, <laughs> some people are there for the satire, but like the people that run the page are very serious about it. Like <laughs> so serious about it. And it's some crazy stuff. Like I've never even heard of like, I was just like losing my mind on it the other day. Like, I mean, there was a lot of like, oh, like a women's place is like sex is only to recreate God's children and it's not for pleasure. Like, not even for the man, they were saying. And like, interesting. They were, but is they it were on Instagram? Saying, no, it's on uh, Facebook. It's a Facebook group. Oh, it's a Facebook group. Is it private? Yeah. Yeah. But you just, if you request, I'll accept you. <laughs> okay. I just, I'm gonna go I'm it's gonna so entertaining it. It's, remind us all of the name of it again so we can yeah it kind of makes me feel tongue-tied um christians against science got it i can't I wait like to i live I'm, I'm the hell looking this up i can't wait it's, i was just like screenshotting it and then you read the comments and then you just like keep going and what's amazing <laughs> is like the majority of these people that believe this like really I mean, like this, this ex- like really extremely religious stuff. Yeah. Are none of them can spell? I'm noticing. Um, mm. I, like, I I feel like it's a very uneducated group of people, you know, uh, which is kind of scary and sad at mm-hmm. the same time, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, interesting. I'm gonna take a look. I'm really curious about it. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, but there's a lot about, like, I mean, it just seems like so crazy unhealthy views about sex. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, because I like to see, I like to know what's going on on the other side. I want to understand. Right. That. I went down a rabbit hole with incels once. I was mm-hmm. like, what's up with incels? Like, why I are they? I don't they know what incels are. It's, uh, it's involuntary celibate which means that they want to have sex with women, but they're, but women will not have sex with them. And so therefore it's involuntary on their part. And, um, they're typically, uh, white males, um, that still live at home, um, are, can be like, just not very good looking, which isn't necessarily a requirement for me, but I think there's all these other factors for them um right yeah and so I looked into it like I'm not saying this based on having no knowledge like I I went into the group I read their grievances you know and Mm. and I read about their hatred towards women and I just I actually have a good way to get laid yeah but I also have compassion for them because I do believe that they are a product of you know commercialism and um, mm-hmm. pressures from society to be a certain way and to expect their lives to be a certain way based on right. what they see on television, just right. like we are expected to be a certain way, um, due to commercialism. Like maybe it's Maybelline or like cover girl mm-hmm. this and like lose weight here, that, you know? And so similarly, like we have to look at the opposite end of the spectrum, what's happening to the men who aren't fitting into the idea of what's mm-hmm. being shoved in our faces on a regular mm-hmm. basis. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so I wanted to understand them. And so I'm going to look up this Christian group because I want to understand where they're coming from. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Yeah, it's curious. I mean, something I don't don't know anything about, you know? Yeah. Let's go down a rabbit hole. Yeah. A non-science Christian rabbit hole. 
Mm-hmm. Sounds like a new favorite. Want to be fabulous just like these strippers? Pay attention. It's Stripper Tips. You know, send dick pics. Send money first and screenshot that you sent money to Cash App or Venmo, and then we'll answer you. <laughs> then send the dick pic. Yeah. Money, screenshot dick pic. Three <laughs> simple steps. It's just as easy as that, people. <laughs> just as easy as that. I love this that. is going to be two tips. Uh, I, I would think like, so I had an experience when I was dancing. Um, I was, I was like, I was like pretty new, but not that new into dancing. And this customer was like, oh, you know, if you, if you like sat on guys' lap and called them baby and like talked like this and, you know, talked like da 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 then you would like make a lot more money. And I was just like, I had, I remember like having like a, just like thought in my head. First of all, like, that's very mansplaining, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> just be like, this is how I should do my job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> I'm doing my job wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, fuck that. Like, that's not me. And I, I understand fully that I have a persona when I am in my work mode, which I do when I'm on stage, when I'm on tour, when I'm everywhere, you know, like yeah. when I'm performing, I, I have a different, I have a little bit different, but it's still me, you know? And I think that that's like a tip for, I would give, especially to like new dancers is like, just don't even like, also men will come in and say crazy things to you. Like that, but you should not be basing anything off of like anything but yourself and who you want to be you know yeah if, if sitting on your if sitting on people's laps and calling them baby is your thing that's that's your thing that was just not you know something that resonated with me um and right. what I was putting out there and I, I I have felt pressure especially from like male customers in the past to like be a certain way or like do more or you know all kinds of stuff lose weight gain weight grow your hair Wear more makeup. Get a boob job. Makeup. Do that. Yeah, get everything. Your boobs in. Don't get your boobs in. Yeah. Get ready for our rapid fire question round. It's time for four for one. Have you ever had sex at a party and then soon after reached into the freezer to grab ice and realized that you hadn't washed your hands yet? I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> but. But I don't know. But maybe. <laughs> but maybe. But maybe. Wouldn't put it past me. I love that you actually really had to think about it. That made me happy. Yeah. That you thought. Oh, oh what a sister. <laughs> All right. If you could pick two celebrities to watch make out, who would it be? Um Tom Hardy and oh, yeah. Killian Murphy or Cillian Murphy or whatever his name is. The one, the one, both of their characters in um, that show they did, the gangster show. Did you just make two hot dudes, straight hot dudes, make out? Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> like a dream of mine. I don't, I've been saying lately that I'm pretty sure I'm a gay man stuck in a straight woman's body or a bisexual <laughs> woman's body. <laughs> I, I think but also I think a lot of us women are actually like really into that at least most of the girls into are. straight guys so. you know, I'm so it's like one yeah, of my or even common, gay too it's one of my common fantasies actually it's really you guys don't even want it I got a couple friends out there that I've already heard you guys up in my head <laughs> <laughs> like Sims oh my god <laughs> Yeah. All right. Last question. You got a period stain on a customer's pants. What do you do? Be like, I would be like five hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> My blood is expensive. It is. That's a, that's a fucking. That is a very intimate piece of me. You should be so blessed. You yeah. were blessed by God today. <laughs> Oh, that couldn't have been a better answer to that. Thank you. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, Izzy, can you please tell everyone where we can find you and follow you and learn more about you? 
Oh, yeah. Um, I'm on Instagram, Izzy Pop, I-Z-Z-I-E-P-O-P. Uh, I have an OnlyFans, if anyone's into that. OnlyFans.com slash Louie Louie, L-E-W-I-E-L-E-W-I-E. I go by Louie a lot of times when I'm dancing. Okay. Um, yeah, that's probably the easiest ways to find me. Okay. Word up. I'm so yeah. glad that we decided to do this. Me too. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So exciting. Yeah, it is. And I can't wait to see you again in person in the very near future. Yeah, let's do nails soon. Yes, nail date. Yeah. Nail date. I definitely need them. You can tell. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much it for today's episode, you guys. As usual, we launch these shows every Wednesday on Spotify, YouTube, and anywhere that you can listen to podcasts. So make sure you tune in next week with a new guest. Thanks. Bye. Bye. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can email us at yesastripperpodcast at gmail.com. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at yesastripperpodcast. And you can catch the show on YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, anywhere that you can find podcasts. We hope you tune in next week. I've been your host, A.M. Davies. See you soon.